Welcome to BigCountryPreps.com. I'm Evan Wren, and this is the Capital Farm Credit Wednesday Night Podcast, our weekly look at the area athletic scene, what happened last week, and what's going on this week. I'm here with my partner, Dan Youngblood, via Zoom. And tonight, Dan, we've got a, a fun show. We've got a, a very special guest, Dwayne Hopper, uh, still the girls' basketball coach at Hermley, but in the very near future, he will be roaming the sidelines over at Wiley as the new girls' basketball coach that's just been announced. Yeah, that was announced earlier this week that that he'd be taking that job replacing Amy Powell, who is uh, was promoted into a, an administrative position where she'll be uh, kind of overseeing the the girls' athletic programs over at Wiley. Uh, but this was this was cool news and not necessarily terribly unexpected. I think you and I both kind of had an, an idea that, that that there'd be a chance in the future that Dwayne Hopper would end up back at his alma mater just because of the success he had uh, to start his coaching career at Hermley. And uh, I think it's just a I mean it, it's just such a great fit. I mean he's a guy that will I think will we'll get the most out of the, the type of athletes that Wiley has. We'll play a brand of basketball that really fits the type of uh, the work ethic that those girls bring to the court. And I think he's going to do a great job, but it, it's going to be fun to watch. Uh, I, I actually have been around long enough that I, I covered Dwayne as a player at Wiley. I covered him some as a player at, at Harden Simmons. So I've, I've, I've known Dwayne for a long time. He was actually, he was one of my favorite players probably of, of all time. I've, I mean, my, the entire time I've spent in the big country covering high school athletics, as far as, Boys basketball players, he's probably one of my favorite that I've ever covered just because of the effort uh, and, and energy he played with. He was a guy that was never a great shooter. He was a really good rebounder, did all the little things behind the scenes that make a team really good. And uh, and you saw that in that he helped lead a team to a, to a state tournament uh, and was one of the best players on that team without being one of the best offensive players, which I always think is, is neat when a guy can find a niche like that and, 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 and do what he does. And I think that that's kind of helped kind of inform his coaching career. I think he, 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 they play, his teams play a blue collar style and he's going to bring that to a Wiley team where they're going to get after you and it's going to be a lot of fun to watch but uh, I'm excited to talk to Dwayne today it's going to be a fun conversation before we jump into this week's show we need to thank our primary sponsor Capital Farm Credit with offices all over Texas including Stanford and Abilene by your own slice of Texas with Capital Farm Credit together we're better all right and with that uh before we bring on Coach Hopper, we uh, we had an interesting week last week. Uh, you attended some uh, quite a bit of baseball. Mm-hmm. I got to see quite a bit of softball. And one series in particular that, uh, that I got to view was Breckenridge and Merkel with two of the best pitchers in the area going at it. Uh, Chloe Whitmer, Chloe Whitmer from, from Breckenridge and Josie Whitehead from Merkel. Both pitchers did a great job. Uh, four to one was the, the score in the first game. Merkel winning that one really by bunting just bunted Breckenridge to death in that one. Uh, and then four to two in 12 innings was the final in game two. Again, both pitchers did a great job uh, in, in both games. Uh, there were, I mean, there were 27 strikeouts combined in the first game. Mm. Um, Whitehead struck out 25 for the series and Whitmer, I believe struck out 26 for the series, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, neither pitcher was hit very hard. They're out there uh, laboring in in hot weather, especially on Saturday when it was just brutally hot, 107 degrees. Merkel takes the series. They advance to face Cahoma, which uh, you know this week uh, gets underway. And that's another that's another ball club that I got to see. I got to see uh, Hannah Wells firsthand, and I'm telling you that girl can bring it. That mm-hmm. girl can she she's got some she got some pop. And Cahoma was most impressive. You got to look at him as well. Uh, what were your impressions of that ball club? Uh, same, same as yours. I got to see them in a series against the Wall. So I got to see both their pitchers. I got to see Wells throw game one, and then Calvio throw game two. And they, they, that's a. I don't see a whole lot of weaknesses with that team. They got two really good pitchers, a super deep lineup with a lot of pop. Uh, they're shooting those gaps routinely, turning you know, doubles into triples, running really aggressively. They're. Uh, just a really good team, and the, the crazy part is, like a lot of these other teams, they're really young. So they got this. This is a team that that could be very good for a long time. And uh, and you mentioned that Merkel Cahoma series that's that's coming. That's that's going to be a big big time series. But uh, yes. I, I think both both those teams are, are are really really high quality teams. And the thing about Merkel I thought was interesting was that this with, with their win over Breckenridge, they exceeded last year's. Uh, run last year they lost in a, a really tough series kind of similar to the Bregan which one honestly where they were on the other side of that yeah. uh, against Jacksboro who had a really really good pitcher and they, they they lost a couple of pitchers duels this time they won those which I think is, is represents a pretty good step forward for this Merkel program which is really 
I think in the midst of a, a really strong run in softball right now, an extended one that they can really uh, continue for a while. And I think that that was a, a big step forward for them to, to, to put down a scrappy Breckenridge team. And now they're going to have a chance against a, a Kahoma team that's very, very talented. This is going to be a, f- a fun series for sure. Well, it's a great matchup between Josie Whitehead throwing to that Kahoma lineup. I want to see. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be an interesting matchup because uh, she's got all the pitches. Uh, she's got great movement. She's got, uh, she's got some velocity. And she's a competitor. She's a gamer. So it's going to be it's going to be fun to watch that lineup facing Whitehead and see uh, to see what happens. Uh, you know, and, and also well sewing against Merkel is going to be. I want to see that. Uh, Wells probably throws harder. I don't know that she's got the same movement on her uh, on her up pitch uh, on her rise ball, but uh, and she's just wild enough. She's just she's not wild, but she's just wild enough where it's nerve wracking for a batter to go up there and face her. You know what I mean? Uh, because she's, she's in and out quite a bit and uh, not up and down more, but in and out. So it's kind of, mm-hmm. she's a scary pitcher to face. Yeah. And she's one of several we've got in the area right now. Just we're just a lot of really good young pitching. Uh, we mentioned, you know, three or four just there on that list there. And then uh, we got a couple other teams advancing, obviously one of the ones the Wiley's back in the third round in class five, a, they had a, a big series win over the weekend against El Paso Chapin. And that was a really quality Chapin team. They beat them 12, six in game one, seven, three in game two, to advance to face Canyon Randall. But they're another team with, with two of those pitchers were like, we're talking about two juniors and Reese Ferrer and Riley Moore, who are both p- pitching at a really high level and another uh, group that's going to be back next year. When you look at this, the pitching staff, the pitching talent that we're going to have in this area, not only this year, Next year, and I know a lot of people, you, you say you we're losing Sitlali Gutierrez, and that's true, but there are a lot of really talented young girls still in this area and that are still pitching for their teams right now. Summer Smith's another one for Hermley. Uh, she's got them going. Eula as well. They've got a they've got strong pitching as well. But it's uh, it's interesting to see all these girls we've been talking about all year. It's not a surprise. There, there's a reason we've been talking about all these girls in the circle all year, and they're the ones whose teams are still, they're still playing right now. Absolutely, and fast pitch. Uh, fast pitch softball pitching is going to get you – uh, where you want to go. And without it, you're in a lot of trouble. Now, we've seen teams with mediocre pitching advance as far to state, uh, uh, all the way to state. We've seen it. But once they get there, uh, they're really at, uh, they're, they're handicapped. And, yeah, and but, but you can you can hit your way to state if you can, but it's really yeah. difficult to win it all. Yeah. And that's exactly right. If you're going to have, you know, not necessarily even mediocre, but if you're going to have slightly less than, than excellent pitching, you better hit the ball because you're going to start facing teams who have that excellent pitching that are going to shut your lineup down to some degree. Yes. Uh, so, so you better be able to, to to manufacture some runs and those sorts of things. But we've got some interesting teams left. And you talk about the ones, obviously, Stanford is the, the odds on favorite to get back to state out of our region in class 2A. Probably the odds on favorite to repeat, although there's there are some other strong programs in the state like Crawford and, and such. But uh, it, it's neat seeing all these teams. And some of these are teams that are, we've kind of gotten used to playing at this level. But when you look at 1A, when you talk about EULA and you talk about uh, – uh, Hermley, these are teams that are that are now making the, these types of runs for the second straight year. Merkel's one of those programs that's stepping into that realm. And Kahoma is the really interesting one, I think, because not only do they have the type of pitching we're talking about, they're a lineup that can put up double digit runs if you're not careful, too. So there are several teams that are that still playing. Colorado City is another one that I think we need to mention that's still playing. But absolutely, a lot of these teams still playing that are very, very dangerous. And they're going to be fun to watch as they as they continue to progress through the playoffs. And we would be remiss if we did not mention the fact that Gutierrez, we witnessed her throwing a no hitter a five inning mercy rule, no hitter uh, in a 10 to nothing win over Coleman over at ACU uh, when she was just absolutely dominant. Um, one walk away from, from, uh, from a perfecto. Yeah. And I think we'd also be remiss uh, before we move to baseball. If we didn't mention that the Hamlin lady Pipers got them a, a playoff win advance into the region quarterfinals. They got a, a big win over the weekend in a, in a single game series or a single game playoff. Uh, so a, a big deal for them as well, just to, to advance and, and continue what, what's been a really strong year. They beat miles six to two. So, so they've got to throw a shout out to Hamlin as well. And what coach Botus has done there. It's been pretty remarkable. And then also Heiko Heiko is one that is, is easy to forget because wow. they're, they're in region two, Heiko? but Heiko goes out and not only beats uh defending region semifinalist Winthorpe, they sweep them seven, four, nine, three. Uh, so Heiko's still playing out there in region two. So make sure you pay attention to them as well. They got a big series against Toler coming out, coming up this week, but, uh, what, I mean, we're three weeks into the playoffs and think about how many teams we still have playing. We've talked a lot about kind of, we're in a kind of a golden era, I think of, of softball in the big country. And I think we're, I think these teams are proven it. when you got this many teams still playing three weeks into the playoffs, yes. you're playing some pretty good softball. 
I, I do not recall more depth overall uh, in softball in the big country since I have been here and I go back to 2006. Uh, this is the most depth in terms of just overall quality that I've ever seen uh, this, yeah. this particular year. Uh, we're loaded, absolutely yeah. loaded. I agree. And I think you can make a similar case on go the ahead. baseball side. I was saying, I think you make a similar case on the baseball side. There's a lot of really good teams. Uh, I mean, obviously, we're only in the area around the second round or region quarterfinals in the case of 1A. Uh, on the baseball side, but we've got a lot of teams that are still playing that have, will have a chance to play a while. I think I got to see several of those. And one of those is one that we probably did not talk about enough last week. I, I mentioned him last week as, as a contender in region one, but I finally got to see him. This wall Hawks baseball team is very young, but they are very talented. This is, this is a core group. And I, I, we'll see this year if they're ready to get, to make a type of run to get out of this region, maybe to the state tournament, but this is a, a core group that I think has that potential before these kids move on. This is a really good group of, of baseball players, and they're in a, a stacked region that we've been talking about forever. We, we've, Brock survived. They're going to be playing Cahoma this week. Uh, they, 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 took, they took down Breckenridge in two games. They, they had a close one in game one, and then we were able to run rule them in game two. So in 3A, you're talking about we've got Brock, Cahoma, Jim Ned, Wall, Ballinger still remains. We did lose early. Early early had a tough series against really a hard luck uh, matchup. They played a Bowie team that was preseason top 10 that just ended up in, in, in the third place in their district. They go and beat them in game one, 7-0, and then dropped the, 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 the final two games of that series. So early had an early exit. But uh, just a lot of good baseball being played. And, and then uh, we mentioned 3A. 2A, is, again, is stacked. And I got to see a lot of those teams last week. I saw – I saw Anson, I saw uh, Coleman defeat Stamford, and I also saw Albany uh, defeat Winters. And I, so I got to see five of our, our 2A teams last week, three of which are advancing into this week. And they're still in the bracket there with, with Colorado City and Forsan as well. So we've got a lot of really good baseball being played at the 2A level. Having seen Anson now live for the first time this season, what were your impressions? Uh, honestly, pretty close to what they were last year. I think they've just gotten better, if anything. They're, they're, this is a really good Anson baseball team. They're very, very solid in every regard. They field the ball well, they pitch the ball well, and they hit. Uh, and they actually got probably a little bit more of a test than some probably expected them to from Miles. Uh, the first game was was a tight one. They, they won 5-3, to three, and then they won uh, game two, 8-1. to one. But uh, I'm, I'm impressed with this team. It's, got, it's deep in pitching. And I think at the 2A level, if you got two or three, three or four guys they can go out and give you quality innings. You've got a chance to make a deep run, and they've definitely got that. And then they field the ball really well. That's something I think is important at that level, too. If, if you can field the ball behind your pitchers, they turn several double plays in, in the, in the, against uh, uh, against Miles. If you can field the ball behind your pitchers, you've got a chance. And then, obviously, that, that lineup is a lot of the kids we've been talking about for years now. And then this is a team that was one win away from state last year. One. Yeah, and bring a lot of those kids back. I was I was very impressed. And I, I was I thought it was I, I was glad I got to see Albany as well because Albany's been one of those teams that them and Anson have both kind of been in that conversation for a while now. When you talk about Region One Two A from as far as our area goes, those are kind of the two teams that have been our our flag bearers. And uh, this Albany team's kind of the same way. They've got uh, they're good deep yes. pitching, they've got a good strong lineup, and yeah, the, I the, I don't think it would be uh, out of the realm of possibility to see a, an Ants and Albany rematch at some point. Those obviously they played twice in district, but I think there's there's a chance we could see both of them playing each other again down the road. Yeah, so we're running uh, running into new deal both of them also. That's a possibility yeah. too. So yeah, we've seen that in the past as well. Yes. All right. It's just about time to bring on Coach Dwayne Hopper. Uh, but before we do that, we need to thank our sponsors. First and foremost, Capital Farm Credit, who brings you these Wednesday night podcasts throughout the school year. Also, for the love of the game, broadcasting and our old friend, Terry Slavens, owner of K-Lakes 93.5 FM out of Breckenridge, K-A-T-X 97.7 FM out of Eastland, Classic Country AM 1330 out of Graham, 94.7 FM, KWKQ out of Graham, Carol 00, 1430 AM out of Breck, and KWBY, 98.5 FM out of Ranger. That is for the love of the game, broadcasting. Also, Rob Durham, sales consultant at Bayer Chevrolet Buick Cadillac up in Brackenridge. If you're in the market for a vehicle new or used, give Rob a shot. He's one of the nicest guys you'll ever want to meet. Call him at 254-559-2266. That's Rob Durham at Bayer Chevrolet Buick Cadillac in Brackenridge. And finally, Phil Hill of the Abilene Realtors Group, big supporter of local athletics. If you're in the market, give him a shout at 325-669-5153 or visit his website at philhillproperties.com. And with that, it is just about time to bring on Coach Dwayne Hopper, who, I mean, uh, just what an outstanding job it did at Hermline. Uh, what an, and particularly the last uh, in, 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 in my opinion, the last three years really demonstrated that he's, you know, truly a, a, a gifted young coach. 
Um, mm-hmm. And at his age, he's not even 30 years old yet. He could be at Wiley for a, a, a long time. If it works yeah. out well, he could be there for a very long time. Yeah. I mean, and this is a guy who's really a winner in life. I mean, you look at what he's done during his time at Wiley. He led them to their only their second state tournament appearance in program history goes to Harden Simmons, leads them to their deepest play, the deepest postseason run of the, the division three era to the elite eight. And then he goes to Hermley, takes them to a pair of back-to-back state championship or state tournaments. And then, and then goes on, you know, the three straight uh, runs to the region finals. And he's won literally everywhere he's ever been and, and anything, did anything he's ever done. So I think that's the type of guy that Wiley's getting. It's, it's really exciting. I think he's a, a, a guy that brings, I think a, a, a brand of basketball, that I think will translate really well. To what they're doing. If you look at some of the programs in our region in particular, who have had a lot of success, even at the big school level, uh, I, I think there are some c- comparisons you can make uh, to, to guys who have done things through a similar formula to what to what Hopper is bringing to Wiley. Some guys who have played just some some you know relentless defense, uh, sound offense. I mean, and they're I mean, you, you don't want to make a comparison necessarily to, to Joe Lombard and in, in, in Canadian. But I mean, when you talk about those types of programs, you're talking about similar types of athletes and you're talking about a, a similar defensive defense first style. I think it's this is one that will translate well to the class 5A level. And it's going to be fun just to see how that how that goes. And, and uh, he's going to be, uh, I think, well received, obviously, being a, a native son. And, and it's going to be fun to watch. And uh, I'm, I'm just really excited to talk to him about that tonight. Uh, he's a guy I've, I've known for a long time, like I said, at the outset of, of our podcast tonight. And looks like he's just about ready to join us. So let's go ahead and get him on. And joining us now, Hermley girls basketball coach Dwayne Hopper, soon to be the new girls basketball coach at Wiley, his alma mater. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me. Coach, I always had a sneaking suspicion that you were going to end up back at Wiley sooner or later, and here you are, back where you went to school. You've got to be ecstatic. Just tell us how you're feeling. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm very excited. Um, a little bit sad to be leaving Hermley, of course, but i um, excited to get back to the Ablin area. Me and my wife talked when we came to Hermley that it'd be a one-year deal. That's all she agreed to, and it, it turned into five years. And she said if ever we could get back to Abilene, I'd have to take a job. And so um, being at Wiley makes it even more special. And, uh, Coach, just with this news coming out, there's obviously a, a big response from the community, particularly the athletic community in the big country. Uh, just what have the, the past couple of days been like for you, just seeing that outpouring from, from coaches in your profession and from people who have, who have uh, – I guess, taught and, and, and worked with you and those sorts of things in the past? Yeah, it's been overwhelming, I'd say. I, I fell asleep early last night. I was so tired, and I woke up to over 100 text messages. And so um, it's great to see that people were still following me and keeping up with me at Hermley um, and that Wiley people still are super supportive, and it's like a family. Um, the teachers that taught me or coaches that coached me when I was there, they might be retired, but they still check up on me and – uh I think that's what makes Wiley so special. And then other coaches, um, just the coaching fraternity, it's just like it's like a family. And so for them to keep up and support me and understand what a tough decision it was for me to leave Hermley because it's a good place and a good job, um, but also supportive of me of going and trying new things and um, a new adventure for my family. But you had five great years at Hermley. That was a heck of a run that you had. Yes, sir. Um, and it's always going to be a part of you, isn't it, really? It's always going to be a special place to you, isn't it? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, sir. I mean, coming out, like, um, Abilene's the only place I ever lived. I was born and raised there, and I went to high school there, obviously, and then I went to college there. And then going to Hermley was very new to me. Um, I just got married, and so it was a lot of news, a lot of firsts for me. Uh, they gave me my first job, took a chance on a kid straight from college, no coaching experience, uh, and it worked out. Uh, but the – the kids are super special. Um, I did a lot of firsts with them. We did a lot of firsts together in school history. And then <clears throat> just the community of staff there at the school and parents um, helping me raise my my firstborn uh, has spent four years there. And so she's grown attached to the place and grown attached to kids and to families. And so that was really special. And it's hard to leave for those reasons. Um, but when I look back on her, I'll have great memories. And uh, shifting gears a little bit to to the basketball court now. For those who who didn't get to see your Hermley teams play, I guess just what can can folks expect to see from a Wiley from a Dwayne Hopper coached Wiley girls basketball team? Uh, I think we're just gonna get after it for 32 minutes, and then if we go into overtime or double overtime, whatever, we'll get after it for those many minutes. 
uh, I thought that was the way I played. I wasn't very skilled, you would say, but I played really hard all the time in high school and in college and um, found my way to, you had to leave me on the court because I was going to play so hard. And I don't think people wanted to play against Wiley back in the day when I played or wanted to go against our team. <clears throat> and that's what I want our the girls team at Wiley to be is when you see Wiley on the schedule, you don't really want to play him. I mean, not, we're not the best team in the world, but we're going to, we're going to hustle and get after you. We're going to pest you a little bit, make it tough on you. Coach, you're making the jump from one A to five A. What changes, if any, will you be making, or are you going to just stick to your guns? Uh, I mean, I'll have to adjust. I'm sure. Um, I'll talk to other coaches and see sort of the transition, but at the end of the day, basketball is basketball. You got to put in the goal. You got to play defense. You got to make shots, got to make free throws, fouls, all the, all of it's the same. I think it's just a different caliber of or a different level of uh, coaches, players, uh, maybe schemes, maybe depth. At 1A level, we might only have 10 girls <clears throat> total on our team. Well, in Wiley, I might have 10 just freshmen playing. And so that'll, that'll be a nice adjustment to have depth and a lot of girls in the program to choose from and work with in practice. And let's talk a minute about the hiring process. I saw Coach Powell's tweet, uh, I guess, last week or two weeks ago that, that she would be leaving the sidelines. And then I found come to find out later that she'd be uh, taking a promotion to, to do the, the girls coordinator thing. Uh, right. Just At what point did Wiley express interest in you? At what point did you kind of feel it was a possibility? And just how fast did that play out? Um, I think it was a day or two after she resigns. I'm not exactly sure how long it was. Um, but like, I, like you, I saw the tweet and – I thought it was interesting for her to step down, um, but it makes sense going and going to admin. I mean, that's what you get to when you get to the higher levels of coaches going to admin and sort of get away from coaching. It's hard to do both of those things. Um, but then while they reached out and <clears throat> asked if I would be interested in, and I told, I told the girls here and <clears throat> I told my wife, if I'm not, if I'm happy and you're happy, I'm not going to go look for a job. A job's going to have to come find me or someone's going to have to come call me. Uh, and that's what Wiley did. And when it's a, a school and a program like Wiley, the tradition they've had, uh, you can't not answer them or not talk to them at least. And so I told my wife, we we're going to go, I was going to go listen to what they have to say. And then <clears throat> as the process went on, it, it just made more and more sense. And it, <clears throat> it just seemed like the right fit to go back to Wiley. Coach, um, it's great for you to go back to your alma mater, but uh, your alma mater does expect success. It expects to win there's there's going to be right. a little bit of pressure there but your personality uh you strike me as the type of guy that will re welcome pressure and welcome the expectations right <clears throat> i love the expectations i was in high school and it's, it's how i was raised and i went to Harden simmons and we expected to win and then here i <clears throat> just being in programs like that i just expected of myself and the, the girls underneath me that we're going to go win we don't have to win everything but we're going to try our hardest and find a way to win and so I, I like those expectations. Um, I don't think it's pressure at all. A um, coach told me before said pressure is not wins and losses. Pressure is uh, real world stuff. When you lose your job and you got to pay your rent, that's pressure. Um, so <clears throat> if we played a big game and we're not doing as well as I want to, it's not pressure. It's just it's just part of coaching, I think, and you got to learn to deal with it. And uh, Wiley's such a unique place. I've, I've covered Wiley for a long time. I covered you playing back in the day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but there are a lot of people still there that, that you probably, that you, uh, I guess, had as teachers or, or had as coaches. It's, it's a place where a lot of people go and stay for a long time. What's that going to be like coaching alongside folks who, who were kind of mentors to you back in the day? Oh, it's awesome. Um, the first person I called when <clears throat> Coach Martin called me was Coach Perkins, who was my coach there. And, um, he had a lot of great years at Wiley, and he's been the coaching profession a long time. And, and he told me how grave a place Wiley is. And you could see it when I was a um, a student. The, the coaches that I had when I was in seventh grade were still then were still there when I left. And some of them are still there today. And <clears throat> I think people stay because they got great kids to work with. Um, it's a family-like staff. And then um, just the community of Wiley, it's super supportive of each other. And it's it still – still has that small school vibe to me, I guess you would say, even though it's really big school. Coach, you already coached for five years and you're not even 30 yet. <laughs> and I mean, you're getting this job at Wiley. You're a young man. Um, yeah. We could be looking at a career that is a, a very long, successful career. It's possible. I mean, 
Can you envision yourself 30 years from now still roaming the sidelines? Oh, man, I think I could. Um, I, I think I want to coach till I – so I don't have fun with it anymore until the games don't mean something. And they definitely mean something to me. Practice still means something to me. And so <clears throat> I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. And it'd be great um, to coach all my years. Now God might have a different plan for me, but to coach all my years at Wiley would be great. And um, it's, I, I feel like it's a place that me and my wife can raise our kids. We're both from the area. Um, I know Wiley is a great school, so it'd be good education for my kids. And I know they'll always have good kids and good families at Wiley's. And so <clears throat> if they'll have me, I'll stay as long as I need to or want to. David, I'm going to sneak one in here and we'll ask two quick questions and then wrap it up. Okay. And Dwayne, your, your situation's uh, kind of interesting in that, in that the former coach, Amy Powell, uh, is still on the athletic staff out there as in an administration, in an administrative role. How much will, do you think that'll help just in terms of making that transition, kind of getting to know some of the, the personnel and those sorts of things? Oh, it would be great. I've already texted her probably about 20 times, probably getting tired of me texting her, um, just asking her questions. Um, I don't think you can learn more than from the person that was in front of you. And so she knows how the team knows the girls, knows the district and the region. And then there's so many little things you don't even think about, like ordering uniforms or ordering stuff or um, summer schedule or basketball camps and stuff that she's already thought about and already sort of mapped out for me. And so I think it'll be an easier transition if I have a question about something that they did last year or need some advice, I can just go down the hallway and talk to her. Okay. And along those lines, what is next? I mean, how quickly do you jump into the, to, to your new position and kind of start planning for the summer and kind of getting these girls ready so they're going to be playing your brand of basketball next next. Right. Um, and I would go down every day if I could, but I still, I still want to honor being in Hermley and <clears throat> don't want to sell Hermley short, but <clears throat> when I get time, our – our Hermley uh, girls are being successful in softball. And so I don't have anything to do in athletics now. And so I'll head down there um, to Wiley just as much as I can. And uh, I'm going to, down there actually tomorrow to meet all the girls and sort of lay out a schedule and just expectations and sort of just get to know them and build that relationship. That way, when it comes to summer and we get to do some of the strength and conditioning and skill work that UIL lets you, that it's not a complete stranger they're working for or working with. And I'm excited about it. And I also got to buy a house and there's other things that go into it. So I need to get down there as quick as I can. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. And obviously we're going to be uh, keeping a very close eye on you uh, at Wiley. Yes, Best sir. of luck to you. Best of luck to thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's exciting. And that was Hermley girls basketball coach, Dwayne Hopper, who has just uh, been named the new girls basketball coach at Wiley for the next season, for the next school year. Uh, and, uh, you and I had always said it, he'd be such a great fit at Wiley eventually. And wow, it's already happened. It happened sooner than I thought it would, but it happened. Here we are. Yeah. I mean, the, the news of coach Powell, uh, kind of leaving the sidelines was, was a little bit unexpected for me. I'm sure for a lot of other people as well. Uh, she did a really good job in her time at Wiley and, and now is, is kind of taking on a new challenge. But, uh, w when that news was announced, I was not terribly surprised that, that Dwayne was the, the guy that they went to. I thought he'd be a, a great fit and, and it sounds like he's excited to be there. It's going to be fun. Uh, it's, it's kind of Wiley's such kind of an interesting community and in that, that you, a lot of times you get former players back in roles and it's just such a tight knit place where when coaches get those jobs, they, they usually, they hold those jobs for a long time. So to some degree, I think you're right. He's probably at Wiley a little sooner than we expected him to be, but he's a guy that could be there a long time if, 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 uh, if this works out and I think it will, I mean, you look at, he gave Hermley five really good years when, when you take a, a school to its first two state tournament appearances in your first two years, a lot of coaches would have been out of there then. He he came back for three more years, took him to the region finals three more years, and uh, yeah. And you uh, know what? You know what? I'm going to interrupt you on that because if you went to state twice with teams that were were loaded with talent, and we expected them to, you know, because he got nailed with graduation at that point, and he still was producing regional teams. Yeah, you know, and that his. And in fact, you even said his best coaching job ever was his third year when we really thought they were going to take a step back, and boom, they're already playing, you know, in the regionals. Yeah, that's when you really knew that uh, the guy had it going on. Yeah. And here's what's crazy. I mean, he's coached for five years now and has never <laughs> not reached a region championship. Yeah. Game. And that yeah. that's obviously going to be, I mean, the, the, he's going to face different challenges at the class five, a level at Wiley. But I think that does show the potential he has as a, as a basketball coach and Wiley. I think Wiley fans should be very excited about what the possibilities that he can bring to that program. And it's going to be fun to watch. He's, he's going to be a really fun guy to watch. He's going to get after his girls. The girls are going to get after their opponents and it's going to be a, they're, they're, I think they'll have a lot of success.
All right, that's just about going to wrap it up for the Capital Farm Credit Wednesday Night Podcast. But before we do that, we want to remind you that we have three separate subscription packages here at Big Country Preps. we got a monthly for five bucks a month. We've got a semi-annual subscription, six-month subscription, where we knock that price down to four bucks a month. And then we've got an annual 12-month subscription where we knock that price down to three bucks a month, 36 bucks for a full year of Big Country High School athletic coverage. We'd also like to remind you that if you ever see a photo you like in any one of our galleries, those are available for purchase. We have digital downloads available for just $7, as well as some keepsakes and some prints. Uh, so you can go and check those out on the site. But as you are scrolling through the site, you'll notice pretty quickly that we take a lot of photos from these games we're at. It's something we enjoy doing and something we are very proud of here at BigCountryPreps.com. All big country, all high school, all the time. Welcome home.